and welcome to The Lighter Side Show. I am your host, Jamie Butler, The Everyday Medium. Today we're going to talk about the Earth Chakra. So we're going to do a little series within this What is Energy Season 5, and we're going to discuss the nine main chakras of the physical body. And those are just the nine main chakras that I see and work with frequently, but there are other different modalities that talk about 12, even 16 and more. Okay, before we get started on the Earth Chakra, guys, I'd love to do some housekeeping notes. If you would like to know what classes, workshops, where we're going to be, what's happening here, please go to jamiebutlermedium.com. You can sign up for our newsletter. Colleen, who's behind the camera, the lovely Colleen, puts together the newsletter and it is awesome. Everything is organized. You'll know exactly what's going on. We do online classes, we do in-person classes, and we also have travel dates. It's pretty exciting. Which leads me to Luma Summit 2018. It's happening this weekend. Guys, we only have a few tickets available. If you are interested in Luma Summit and joining us here in Atlanta, Georgia for a three-day weekend, 15 lecturers, healing sessions, and exercises, and just enlightenment galore, go to jamiebutlermedium.com and you can buy your Luma ticket right there. I can't wait to see you. I'll be there the entire time, guys. Okay, let's talk about the Earth Chakra. Now, a lot of you Lumineers might not know much about the Earth Chakra, the characteristics and the functions of it, because it's not discussed often. The seven main chakras in the body that align down the spine kind of seem to be really what's hitting mainstream, you know, the ones that are the color of the rainbow. But the Earth Chakra is located from what I see. Now, you know, guys, there's different versions. So what I see is the Earth Chakra is located at the curve or the arch of the foot. And so when the feet are together, the chakra is a little bit larger. But when the feet are separate, the chakra, the energy in each foot is a little bit smaller. To me, the color is a dark brown. Sometimes it's black in color. Now, I've seen people who have this chakra not right up on their foot, but it's about a, it's about a foot away from them, <laughs> about 12 inches beneath them. Now, there's other literature that states that this chakra is three feet to sometimes 50 feet beneath them in the earth. But the way that I've experienced it is more closely connected to the body. Now, this wasn't a big deal for me, let's say, 10 years ago. But I started recognizing that in each culture, these chakras function very differently. And the earth chakra for the Americans, um, and I'm going to talk about them specifically briefly because that's what I have most experience in, is becoming um, a necessity to pay attention to. We need a lot of attention to being grounded. Now, we all have heard the terms, the American dream is, you know, being married, 2.5 kids, having a successful job. You know, we're always taught to go for the goal. We're not a culture that traditionally says stay connected and stay grounded. So in this little bit, I'm going to talk about the earth chakra, which is actually feminine. And the element is hmm, earth. It's very grounding. But I like the idea that the earth chakra is feminine. Of course, she is Mother Earth, but the Earth Chakra relates a lot to being connected to the now, being very present. And when we think of those things, sometimes we think of grounding. And sometimes we'll think of the word grounding and being centered as being very controlled and very masculine. But if we start to get into this a little bit more, being a feminine quality, which means the energy is a slight more in flux or it's flexible, bendable, malleable. I find that it's more important because when we're going to ground to something, we need to be more flexible with our ideas. So to be rigid, straight, more stubborn with your grounding or masculine traits, we're talking about the feminine grounding where you can hold space for someone. Even when there's emotional chaos happening, you can still stay present. Do you know what I mean? Being very neutral. You've had that feeling, right? That is the earth chakra. So I took some notes so that I would not wander off with you guys. The earth chakra, brown, is connected to grounding, feminine grounding. It is the connection to being present, and it's about being in the now. In this chakra series, I'm going to break it down to having too much energy in that one chakra, too little energy, and just right, so you can see the characteristic differences. Sound good? 
So too much energy in the earth chakra is going to get you kind of stuck in that routine or stuck in that habit. Have you ever just woken up one day and realized that the last 10 years you've done the same thing and you've never questioned it, but that's absolutely how you had to have that process done, kind of stuck in it. So that's when you have too much earth energy. You're kind of grounded. You're protected in the box. You're not thinking about risk management or getting out or doing something different. Routine. You will also find that you have a hard time seeing opportunities because you're so grounded within that routine. So an opportunity can come by and just hit you in the face. And then your friends and family are like, why aren't you saying yes to that? What's wrong with you? Why won't you do it? To an outsider, it might look like you don't have motivation or it might look like you're lazy, you know, or scared. That's not really it. It's just that you're so focused on being where you are. It could also come across that you are stubborn, stubborn as a rock. That's having too much earth energy. <laughs> you won't want to take the risk. Even if proven safe, you will not want to do it whatsoever. Another attribute to this is that you want to stay indoors. If you have an opportunity to go on vacation or go outside or go camping, you're just like, eh, no, I just want to be here on my couch. I just need this. That is an abundant amount of brown energy on your feet. And that sounds like you have dirty feet, doesn't it? It's not what I mean. <laughs> Colleen's laughing behind the camera. <laughs> okay, let's talk about too little energy in this chakra. So if you have too little energy, you're not connected to the environment. You'll find that you'll constantly nest to stay connected or to feel comfortable. So that means like you'll go throughout your space, whether it's your office, your car, your home, your bedroom, you'll fluff the pillows, you'll get everything right. That might not just be in, what is that, an OCD thing? It could be that you don't have enough energy in your root chakra, so you're not feeling grounded and connected to it, so you're gonna constantly fluff to make it feel like you're connecting to the space. If you're one of those people who go into the kitchen, you're like, I want all blue dishes, and you buy all blue dishes, and the next month you're like, I want all white dishes, and you intrigue yourself and you buy those white dishes, and the next month you're like, I want all, and you keep changing it, not a lot of earth energy happening here. You know, you're trying to like build a relationship with your environment because you don't have a connection to it. So some other little things that can happen. <laughs> Nowhere feels like home. Oh, Lumineers, I've heard a lot from you guys where you've lived in different places, you've bought different houses, you've moved, and it never feels like home for you. Now, a little bit of that falls under like a spiritual depression because you have such memory and connection to the beyond that you're trying to make that happen in this human life and it's just not adding up. But this is more like you dream if I had bigger window, larger light, if it was cooler weather, if it were something else. You know, we're always looking kind of in an external way, but you're not connecting to it and you just don't really feel like you're home. That's too little earth energy. Poor energy and body and feeling drained is another characteristic. So if you're feeling exhausted all the time, like um, depleted in a way, that is that. Disheartened, not motivated, and you crave to be outdoors. That is too little earth energy. It's kind of like kids when they wake up, they're not really grounded to earth. They're like new little bodies on earth. So they haven't really built that earth chakra up enough. And it's like, as soon as they wake up and they can run, it's like outdoors. My neighbor right now has a newborn. And when she gets fussy, he walks her outside she stops. It's instantaneously. I've seen it time and time again. It's feeding her connection to nature, the environment, earth. It's feeding this earth chakra. Okay, Lumineers, what if you had the most perfect balance of energy in the earth chakra where it was just right? You would feel very connected to your environment. No need for nesting, no need for being outdoors, indoors, and you would also have the sense that where you are in that moment is the most perfect place you need to be. Can you imagine how that feels? Perfection in your presence. That's it, you're connected to the now. You're very much aware of, I wanna say perfection one more time. <laughs> Lumineers, if you can think of a better word, put your fingers to the keyboard and let me know. <laughs> but that is what it is. 
getting back to the earth chakra, I wanted to present the too much, too little, and just right energy. And then we're going to let spirit come in and talk about their viewpoint in the earth chakra. Now, in closing on my end, I want to state that the earth chakra, in my opinion, needs to have a little bit more attention applied to it. A lot of the grounding techniques that we're looking at these days are not just about getting your root chakra down into the earth. It is about getting your feet connected to the earth and not just energy moving from top down into the earth like anchors or rooting. It's also about receiving. Roots aren't just for anchoring and grounding. They also absorb nutrition. So it's a part of how the plant thrives. So when we think about pushing energy into the ground, we also want to receive the earth vibration and bring it up into the body so that we can maintain energy levels, we can maintain mental health, and we can maintain an ease and balance with our emotional state. Okay, I'm going to sign off and let spirit finish up with earth chakra, and I will see you guys next time where we talk about the red root chakra. Bye, Lumis. Who's introducing the show? Um, well, Maybe. we all took a vote, and we think Colleen is <laughs> This was behind closed doors? <laughs> yes. You did not get to be part of the vote? Nope, you didn't get to be a part of the vote. Only because... Okay, just refresh my memory. Where are we in the show? We're in the root chakra portion. And no, we... I know that. But Earth. Earth, excuse me. I know that. <laughs> I said I know the root, but I knew that um, we're... we're... You're going to say... Um, um, this is part two of Earth Chakra. Okay. And um, Maitland and I are going to discuss the energetic values of the Earth Chakra and why people have this chakra. Okay. So, should I say welcome back? Yeah. Okay. Well, or, yeah. Well, it's good. It's, I don't know. Is it a welcome back thing? No. Jesse? Um, uh, it's welcome part, to part two. two. Okay. Welcome ready? to part two. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to part two of Earth Chakra. I am Colleen Ziegler, and this is Maitland. We're very excited to have her here with us. We are going to be talking about the energetic value of the Earth Chakra and why we have it. Yes, why people need yep. it. I am so interested in hearing more about the Earth Chakra because I am not as familiar with this one as I'm sure that you know a lot of our listeners and viewers are not familiar with it as well because it's not one of the chakras that gets a lot of attention. No, it doesn't yeah. get a lot of attention. The other ones that are above your head don't get a lot of attention either. True. Um, but so the chakras are in an alignment. Kind of think about your universe and how the universe um, rotates around the sun the plants rotate around the sun mm -hmm. and how each planet has an axis and has its own um, orbital spin and um, rotation okay. and our chakras are quite similar to that in the human body you have an axis called the shishuna line but it doesn't just run through the body it runs way way up high mm -hmm. beyond the head and way way low below the feet and so if you can imagine that there's a magnet in the Earth's core and it like pulls on your feet That's like that. Cool. And so every person, every animal, every tree, everything that has life force on your planet has this um, shishumna line, this neutral line of energy, which mm -hmm. is not charged positive or negative. It's just neutral. And it goes from... The, the feet or the roots all the way into the core of the earth. And there are chakra marks on there. And, you know, it's cool. What's that? Um, when you are walking on the earth and you go to an earth chakra, because the earth has chakras. Mm -hmm. We talked about that in the vortexes yes. and ley lines. Um, Good memory. <laughs> I have hair in my mouth. Which the vortexes, ley lines, and it was something else. That episode chakras. is... Is it? Chakras? Vortex? Portals? Portals, vortexes, and ley lines. Yes. And we talk about earth chakras. Yes. If you haven't seen that episode, check it out. Because you do such a great job at explaining all of that. 
And I love it. Thank you. I love it. Yeah. Well, can imagine you're walking on the earth chakra using your earth chakra and they line up. The kind of energy you get fed <laughs> through your shishumna line all the way up. Mm. And all the way up through the ethers. It goes miles and miles above your head. That's awesome. Isn't that cool? But you guys don't recognize and it. And we don't think about it that way. No, no, yeah. No. Baby, I don't too much. Yeah, I don't think about, you know, I have this higher consciousness chakra and it literally shoots miles above me. I mean, the sheer thought of that is amazing. And it's not something that we're thinking about on a regular basis at and all. The light show of it looks very amazing yeah. too. I can imagine. So when um, Jamie was talking about the earth chakra, she was talking about it having too much, too little, and just right. Mm. And when the earth chakra has too much, the kind of focus that you want to do to stay in balance not in balance, mm -hmm. in, in the balance, balance yeah. is that you want to add the opposing energetic value to it so that it um, deflates or increases. So when we're looking at the earth chakra, we want to give it higher consciousness mm -hmm. energy, the white energy, and we want to move that down and feed it. So if it's very, very inflamed and too much, you want to give it the white energy and that will help shrink it and get it back into its shape that it needs to function properly. And what are some physical ways that we can do that? There's many physical <laughs> ways we can do that. The easiest is thinking about it. Okay. Because you're, as a human, you're trained to think a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot. So you just kind of take the thought of bringing that energy down from the higher consciousness and feeding it into, and I suppose it works vice versa, right? So you can take that earth um, chakra and bring it up into the higher consciousness as well yeah. i mean is it one of those things that to balance all of that out you're literally shooting it back and back and forth yeah. is that how you would do it okay you can do it that way okay but then if the earth chakra is too small mm -hmm. and you're having problems you know staying um present and connected to your environment and you kind of feel untethered mm -hmm. then you want to bring that brown energy up more so you would you would pull from the earth to give more energy to it okay but if it was too inflamed too much of a good thing you wouldn't add the same thing because then that would just make it more and more of a thing is that something that naturally happens when i'm just thinking walking barefoot you know walking barefoot on the grass is that naturally happening when we're doing that or do we have to have that conscious intention no no it naturally happens it's like when in the old days people used to use real silver for their silver silverware and when you were eating you were kind of consuming just a little bit of the metal mm -hmm. of the silver in the body and that helped uh, keep your immune system healthy and strong and when you stopped using the real silver you had a deficiency in the body because it had relied on it and now it wasn't getting it anymore. Yeah. So when you walk barefoot, you're dosing yourself, but if you keep wearing the shoes and you stay inside, you're not giving yourself the natural <laughs> dosage of it. So for someone who wants to be barefoot all of the time, is that someone who's unconsciously trying to get all of those chakras into alignment? I mean, I'm thinking I have two people in my life who are barefoot all the time, Jamie being one of them. As she is right now, and my daughter being the other, I we literally sometimes have arrived places, and we don't have shoes. <laughs> so I thought about maybe starting to keep flip flops in the car or something, so at least we could have put, put a basket in the trunk full of shoes. Yes. So it's just this constant grounding that's happening, and it's going on for the main purpose of balancing all of the chakras. Yes. yes. And it's not when you find that someone is barefoot like that all the time, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily because they are consciously like crazy and, and loose. Yes. It's because they live too much up here. Mm -hmm. And the way that they can balance that out is to keep grounding and keep grounding and keep mm -hmm. grounding. So it makes them level-headed. So it doesn't necessarily mean that they're wrong. Mm -hmm. Because I know a lot of people are thinking that, oh, okay, now I see that, now I notice. I have a question. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so the earth chakra, the way that it's been explained to me, is is brown. Am I okay? And I'm seeing it being like almost a darker brown. Is it that, is okay. So when I think of that color, um, I know it's represented as black here, but that's because there's probably not any dark brown golf balls. Um, when I see this dark kind of muddy color of a chakra, I almost think of a dirty chakra. And I, so I'm trying to get away of get trying to get myself away from that thought and thinking about it as a pure whole chakra and not just something that's that's muddy. Does that make sense? Yes. Does that make because sense? Because you're thinking of chakras always being polished and pretty and bright. Yes. But yeah. brown is a very beautiful color. This is black. Yes. It's like a dark soil, rich soil color. Okay. Okay, like dirt. Ah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The kind that smells good. Mm -hmm. And it's, we have it located in the bottom of each one of our feet. Mm -hmm. um, and when we put our feet together, I'm hearing that it becomes a bigger chakra. It looks a little bit bigger than the size of a golf ball when your feet are together. So if you're trying to ground yourself consciously, mm -hmm. you'd almost want to stand with your feet together mm -hmm. and make that chakra bigger mm -hmm. and stronger mm -hmm. and ground yourself that way. And you want to have really good posture because that straightens out your shushunda line so that you can run the energy freer with your breath. And there's some people who come in to life with an agreement of not fully being present. So when we look at people who have mental illnesses, the earth chakra placement is a bit of a, a sign. Mm -hmm. Okay, tail, 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 tail sign. Okay, so if you go and you tail, can see that. Tail sign. Visually. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. the further away the earth chakra is from the feet of the person is the amount of um, grounding that the earth is doing away from the physical person. So when there's um, more um, mental disease, and the person, the further the root chakra is away to help anchor that person so that they can complete their lessons and their agreements that they have on earth. Um, and then the closer it is and the closer onto the feet, it's um, closer on to the feet, it's more of in control of the person of how grounded or how loose they are. That's why when you speak with somebody that has autism, they... Um, they're so in front of you. When, when you really get to see them on the inside, if you worked with people who have autism, um, most people look at them on the surface and just say they're kind of wondering. But when you really sit with them, they're extremely present and aware of you and mm -hmm. everything that is. It's because their earth energy is so deep into the core, it's easier for them to stay present. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like... um. It's a, like a personality trait. Everybody has different personalities and chakras, even though they all line up on the shishuna or branch off of the shishuna, they can be in different locations and different shapes and sizes. There's a variety, not extreme varieties. What do you mean by variety. that? Can you, can you give me a visual of what you just said? So the chakras well, are in different places on different people, right? Is that what you're saying? Um, in general. I almost got it that they were mixed. They were mixed up, but that that's never the case. Mm -mm. Yeah. No, they're they're always in the same place. But like somebody with a red root chakra is supposed to be at the base of the spine, mm -hmm. but sometimes you'll see it like three or four inches beneath the base of the spine, yeah. and they're more disconnected from who they are. Okay. You know, so they're going through trauma and experiences like that where they're not bringing all that energy into their core. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes people with heart energy, um, and they don't want to deal with the forgiveness and they're having a really hard time, they will offset and move their energy over mm. off the shishuna line, like a branch off. Okay. So um, it's like watching somebody grow old and watching their posture, if they didn't take care of it, you know, then they lose the ability to stand up straight mm. or they have a hurt hip. Your energy can be that it's like way. It's like sagging well. chakras. <laughs> it's like sagging <laughs> chakras. Well, I mean, that's how I'm seeing it. <laughs> Like, it's like your chakras are sagging. They're just, yes. well, yeah. Or they're just not, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so the main purpose of having the earth chakra in the human etheric field is to help the um, 
energy field mm -hmm. around the human um, stay connected to the environment that they've chosen. It's like the toothpick on the end of the happy birthday when you shove it into the cake so it stays permanently mm -hmm. in the cake. When you carry it, that's what this one's for. It's an interesting example. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the one I can so think of. So give us, give us some tips of what we can do to healthy maintenance of our earth chakra. You know, what can we do on a regular basis to give love to our earth chakra? Yes, Maitland. Okay. <laughs> um, I've been working with Jamie on this one and we have a, a, we've been teaching her a new breathing exercise. Okay. So she is very good morning and night. Mm -hmm. Almost all the time. She does a breathing thing where she pulls the energy down and into her. Down and mm -hmm. in, down and in. Thinking that she's grounding into the earth like the toothpick into the cake. Mm -hmm. And she is, but she's missing a very important part, which is the gift of receiving from the earth. And um, um, I think she mentioned it uh, before, like when we have the root image off the bottom of our feet, we are anchoring ourselves, mm -hmm. but the roots also, in return, receive nutrients from the earth. And so if you are unaware of you receiving the nutrients, then it's not really happening. You're kind of mentally blocking it. Mm. So when you breathe in, imagine breathing in all the light from the above, pulling it through down into the feet, down into the roots, down into the earth. And then when you breathe in, wait, wait. Did you do it backwards? I don't think so. I'm, you know what I'm seeing right now visually? I'm seeing yeah. you as a plant. That's it, though. Yeah. And yeah. The, the, the breathing, I would say probably do what's comfortable. Because you're taking it, the sunlight. It's breathing in and breathing out. Mm -hmm. So you're, breathe, you're bringing up the nutrition and then into the body and out. Because then you're going to find the abundant amount of energy that the earth can actually give you. Mm -hmm. But if you're just anchoring and anchoring, you're going to stay present, but you're not going to have an abundant amount of energy to sustain. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things you can do. <laughs> Anything um, else? Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, a secondary thing that you can do is walking barefoot, and we kind of covered that. Mm -hmm. um, a third thing that you can do is foot stimulation. So that could be getting a foot massage. It could be a vibration. It could be, um, um, what do you call it? Reflexology. Mm -hmm. Getting reflexology. <clears throat> and it's also looking at heart health care for the circulation for the feet. Mm. That makes sense. Because there, our feet is where a lot of times will show us signs of when circulation's off in the body. You know, swollen ankles or, um, you know, what, what, is, what is that called when you kind of lose edema? edema. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. The voice from behind the camera. We don't have a timer going, so I have no okay. idea where we are. Well, let's wrap it up. <laughs> because it's, it's very true, though, the how the heart are connected, the feet are connected to the heart. Because um, the when we talk about being alive and kind of the purpose of being alive, it's for the love of life. It's the passion and the mm -hmm. happiness and the joy. And that tends to resonate mostly in the heart chakra. Not only there, but mostly. Mm -hmm. And the, the tethering point is at the bottom of your feet. So these two things communicate to each other, not only physically, but they do so emotionally. And um, it supports the contract and the agreements that you make in this life. So when one is off, the other one is feeling it. Mm. I love that example because I think I can speak for a lot of people that when we think of our earth chakra, we're not putting our heart chakra in the mix. But once you say that, it makes so much sense. And that if our heart chakra's off, our earth chakra's going to be off. It is. For sure. Thank you for having me on the show today. Thank you for joining us, Maitland. You're welcome. I always love when you're here. I like <laughs> being here. And we're going to come and back I always for love more. the visual examples that you give. Thank you. <sighs> we have rings on. Yeah. Jimmy usually takes them off. <laughs> Alrighty, do you want to sign us off?
Um, she need to sign us off? Or does Jamie do that? That's for all for the root... That's all... <laughs> <laughs> That's all for the Earth Chakra today. Thank you so much, Lumineers, for being here. And as we say on the Lighter Side show, it's not woo-woo, it's choo-choo. Bye, Lumineers! Bye!